do is talk about copper foil for high-speed digital applications. Over the last several years, there's been a lot of developments in the foil arena. Essentially, when we're talking about laminates for high-speed digital, the, the types of materials that are required uh, to create these new materials for the, uh, the high end of the spectrum, um, they require us to look at the resin system, the glass types and, and compositions, and the copper foil. Copper foil is going to be one of the more important aspects of the laminate design process. So I'm going to go through uh, a few things with you. So the agenda, uh, let's see if I can get my page down to work here. Not, there we go. So the agenda today um, is going to be the market drivers. Why, why do we need the, these new types of copper foil? I'll go through the copper manufacturing process basics. Uh, look at the industry naming conventions and some of the some of the issues that IPC is starting to address with these new copper foils. Uh, new copper foil developments. Where where is the market going with those types of copper foils? And copper roughness. Basically, the rest of the story. Um, one of the problems that we run into in the industry is people um, will ask for the RZ of the material and assume that's going to be adequate for modeling. So with regard to modeling and copper roughness of your material, I'd like to go through that a little more detail and explain uh, that to you all. Um, the ultra smooth copper challenges. Obviously, there's some trade-offs when you have a smooth foil, you have to be able to still bond that foil to your dielectric uh, uh, and resin. So we'll talk about that and the importance of the bond treatment on that. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with the market drivers. Um, the market drivers really is uh, you're looking at the next generation of uh, of uh, uh, data rates and and uh, in frequencies. So you're talking about uh, current designs are uh, in the 112 gigabits per second, 26 to 28 uh, gigahertz frequency range. And then people are looking at the uh, PAM4224, which is in the 53 to 56 gigahertz range. And so these things um, are, are being investigated now. There's a lot of work at the PCB and design uh, design level that are looking at what we can do to get to that 224. Um, and so copper is one of those very important things. And the next slide will explain that. So with the future design requirements, um, you're going to need an extremely low loss resin system, uh, no profile copper, which means no nodulation on the copper, and probably something like quartz glass or another type of reinforcement that we haven't uh, really worked on uh, very much yet. Um, you're going to need thermally robust products, reduced dielectric and conductor losses, um, and then um, uh, very low CTE, HDI capable because the density continues to get uh, finer and finer. And then these things have to go through some OM testing for HDI designs uh, for many of our OEM customers. Um, copper foil impact, these equations are just first approximate, first order approximations. So they're not the, uh, there's a lot more complex equations out there that would give you what uh, a lot of the uh, EDA tools are using for their uh, conductor portion analysis in their, in their, in their tools. Uh, but down at the bottom, you can see a couple of charts. These are, uh, from uh, oh, uh, Mitsui Copper Foil uh, presentation that uh, that I'm using here. And you can see this is an FR4 laminate. Uh, FR4 laminates are pretty lossy. So you got uh, the green is the dielectric loss, conductor loss is the copper colored loss. You can see the conductor loss overall is not a large uh, portion of the over total overall total loss in the system. So, um, but as you get to high-speed digital materials, as that material, the loss of the dielectric uh, continues to be reduced by the resin system design and selection of the glass cloth. You're talking about the copper uh, conductor losses are going to be more significant in the total overall loss. And so that's why it's important as uh, laminators in the industry that we look at the copper and what we can do to, to help you improve uh, the overall total loss uh, for your applications. So basic, basic uh, foil manufacturing. Um, this, these are just some cartoons that were put together just to kind of give you some basic ideas of how this is done. Um, there's three major processes. They take the, uh, uh, create the electrolyte. They use uh, raw copper wire. Um, these are all recycled materials. One of the questions we've been getting over the last couple of years is uh, on, the, on the raw materials used to make laminate, you know, um, for sustainability purposes, you know, what is used in your, in your um, products, right? And so copper foil, it's all recycled copper foil. So you I'll show you a picture in the next slide here. Next process is the uh, plating on the on the drum. And I'll show you a picture of one of these drums. It's a titanium drum that's polished to give you a very smooth surface. 
Um, and then they do sur surface treatments. They put several, di several different coatings on these materials uh, to create the finished copper roll. Now, if you're talking about battery foil, um, these surface treatment processes are not used like they are for the, uh, for the uh, copper foil that's used in the uh, PCB manufacturing process. So we'll start out with the uh, electrolyte formation process, and then uh, we'll go into uh, that. Uh, essentially, now these equations do not explain all of the processes, uh, just very generic um, equations, chemical equations to, to show what's going on. They're basically taking this raw copper and creating a, uh, turning it into copper sulfite solution. So uh, there's a picture of one of the, the uh, dissolving tanks that they use, and then they end up with basically the, the plating solution that they're going to use uh, to, to plate the copper foil onto the, uh, onto the material. And as you can see down in the corner, this is a recycled copper foil that's being used. Um, I've also seen in, uh, in uh, Circuit Foil Luxembourg, they actually have this little one inch long piece of strip that's used to seal tin cans for food. So they cut that off and there's literally dump truck loads of those that are, that are um, brought into the plant and they, they dissolve those and make those into copper foil at their facility. The next uh, process would be the electro plate uh, of the copper onto the titanium drum. Um, the, the drum's the cathode, and then they have the anode uh, surrounding that. Um, and this is what that process looks like. So you can see here in the middle picture, uh, you've got a very large uh, titanium drum, maybe 1.5 meters in diameter, maybe a little bit little bit bigger or smaller. Uh, but you can see there's a, on, on the right-hand picture, you can see there's a titanium uh, plate that's wrapped around this drum. And that, and that titanium plate is polished, okay? And they take a very fine... Uh, brush and they polish that entire um, entire surface. There's only a couple of these drum manufacturers in the world and there's also only a few that can do the polishing uh, for that. This particular process of polishing the drum is one of the most important processes. This actual surface is, is the this one over here, the drum side or the, or the uh, plated side of the material. This is where uh, you can see some of the streaks in the material. This represents what you see as the polishing marks in the material itself. So that brush that polishes these drums leaves a surface topography on the, on the drum itself. And this is where they're doing their investment in finer polishing capabilities down to less than one micron, okay? So you can see the, uh, the base foil properties are gonna be anywhere from two microns up to 400 microns. They control the uh, percent elongation in this process. They either use the shiny side or the matte side uh, for either uh, an RTF type foil or an HTE shiny side foil. Um, this one here is showing you the, uh, the, the, the kind of the lumps that occur from the, from the grain structure of the copper. This is also an area, this grain structure with battery foils has been uh, reduced pretty significantly. And battery foils are the most common uh, products uh, made today for the high-speed digital end of the uh, materials used at Isola and other laminators. So we'll look at the treating process next. 